Welcome in! In this video we'll be discussing the Generator Archetype, which recently received new support to make it a decent rogue pick in this metagame. Before we dive in, I'd like to remind you that creating videos like this takes a lot of time and effort, not to mention the caffeine I need. Seriously, it's 2am, I have a lecture in 6 hours, what am I doing with my life? Please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing it. Generator was first introduced in Mystic Fighters, along with two other future fan favorite archetypes, Dragon Mate and Matpack. With the new support we got in Photon Hypernova, Generator has received some much needed consistency boosts and a new boss monster to end on. Let's talk about the design and the strategy of the deck. The archetype draws inspiration from MMORPGs, incorporating concepts like mana into your game plan. Our rooster is made up almost entirely of boss monsters, with each one representing one of the nine worlds of Norse mythology. The newest boss boss monster, Levatein, represents the concept of Ragnarok, or the end of the world. There are also two aids to the bosses, which are fairy type monsters. The gameplay centers around the field spell, Generator Boss Stage, which activates most of their powerful effects. Generator is a level slash rank 9 XYZ focused archetype, but it doesn't have any locks in place, allowing for quick shifts toward link play if you so desire. All of the Generator monsters are also designed to work as support for their respective type, with Mardell being the most notable example, as she is often used in plant decks. The archetype is heavily focused on control, with some of the most powerful bosses aiming to control the flow of the game and consume your opponent's resources. The deck lives and dies by the field spell, and has numerous interaction with it. Let's now take a closer look at the cards. The deck has 3 traps, 3 spells, 10 main deck monsters and 2 XYZ monsters. Starting with the main deck monsters, all generators have the same generic effect, and then differentiate into two subcategories, active and passive. The active ones consume generator monsters to activate their effects at quick effect speed and they are usual interruptions. The passive ones don't require tributes, but they also don't activate their effects at quick effect speed. The active generators are Nidog, which is a solemn strike for one tribute, Utgarda, which can banish a card at quick play speeds for two tributes, Nagflar, which provides a protection from destruction for one tribute, Loptr, which can special summon one generator monster from the deck for one tribute, Hela, which can special summon one generator monster from the graveyard for one tribute, R which is an Omni Negate for 2 tributes, Frody, which can destroy X number of cards for X tributes, and Dovelgus, which can special summon X number of generators from the end for X tributes. Now, these 3 are awful, there is almost no point in running them. On the other end, these 5 are very strong, and are commonly included in most generator decks. The two passive generator monsters are Vala and Mardell. Vala can discard one generator monster to special summon herself from the end or the graveyard, then, if she is summoned, she can also special summon a generator from the end or graveyard. On the other side, Mardell searches for a generator card on summon. Now, let's talk about the heart of the deck. Generator boss stage is one of the best field spell in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! On a soft once per turn, this card allows us to special summon a generator monster. On a hard once per turn, when a generator monster is special summoned, we can special summon as many generator tokens as possible. This field spell is insane, gives us the mana we need to use our monster's effects, and if it resolves, worst case scenario, it gives us Baron the floor out of nothing. Before we introduce the rest of the spells and traps, we have to talk about the second gimmick of this archetype. Making our opponent draw. Wow, such a strong mechanic, amazing stuff Konami. But wait, it's not all bad. We do get some payoff when we make our opponent draw. On a soft once per turn, when a card is added from our opponent decks to their end, R forces our opponent to send one monster from either field or end to the graveyard. On a similar note, boss stage, if we can replace it during the course of the turn, and we can, can summon another generator from deck. So now that we know the payoff for this weird gimmick, let's introduce the remaining spells and trap. First and foremost, boss quest. Boss Quest allows us to place one generator monster on the bottom of the deck and add two generator spells and traps with different names from the deck to the end. This is a double plus for us, because usually we don't want to have our generator bosses in end and we want to summon them with the field spell from the deck. Generator Boss Bite is a card. The effect isn't bad, especially considering Leviathan, but it's very, very, very slow. 
Boss fight allows us to recycle or activate our field spell from the deck, and then makes our opponent draw one, triggering the soft ones per turn effect of boss stage. Considering how much we need our field spell, this card is insane. If we have R on the board, this card is also removal. Boss Room is a continuous trap that, once per turn, prevents our opponents from responding to our Generator cards. This card can be great, as it practically guarantees that our field spell resolves. Boss Loot is trash. It literally arms you. You don't want to lose your token, and it rewards our opponent for killing us. Konami, what the fuck? What's the point of this card? Come on, you can do better than this. Finally, let's introduce the boss boss monsters, Jormungandr and Levatain. Jormungandr becomes big and gains materials each turn, while forcing your opponent to lose a card every turn. With R, this effect is a straight up minus one. Levatain is support for Jormungandr. It can quick effect special summon Jormungandr and attaches a number of cards equal to the material it adds from every field and graveyard without targeting. This is the strongest possible removal that we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now let's discuss strategy. Your aim is to get to the field spell, everything else is secondary. Usually we want to summon Mardel to search it or straight up play the field spell. This is a possible turn 1 setup where we use Lopter to special summon from deck and Vala to special summon from end. Combos in this deck are not predetermined and focus more on using what you have to its fullest potential. This end board doesn't look like much, but it's an incredible board that represents two or three nasty interactions. Let's talk about synergies from other archetypes that help us. First of all, the two unofficial generator cards, World Legacy Monstrosity and Tris Hierarchia. World's Legacy Monstrosity either special summons a level 9 from our end or special summons 2 level 9 from our deck, if we already control a level 9. This is insane in our deck. It gives us access to a rank 9 off the spot and allows us to get Mardel and Orvala in rotation. Trias Hierarchia can be quick effect special summon from end or graveyard by tributing any number of fairies, and it's a level 9. The synergy stems from the fact that our tokens are fairies. Depending on the number of tributes we use, Trias allows us to pop a card if we used at least 2 and draw 2 cards if we used at least 3. Considering we usually generate 3 to 4 tokens every turn, this card is an incredible advantage engine. It also kind of patches up one of our weaknesses, evenly much, which is very rough in this deck. Obviously, we have access to a plethora of rank 9 XYZ monster. Here's a quick selection. Zeus and Utopic Drago Future are also very accessible in this deck. For links, apart from the staples like the Nightmares, we have another World Legacy card. World Gears of Theological Demiurgy is unaffected by monster effects and has 3500 attack. It can also wipe the field once per turn, so it's kind of a Zeus, but the kind your mother says you have a dome, you know, the off-brand version that you buy at the convenience store, that kind of stuff. Finally, let's discuss strength and weaknesses of this deck. As for strength, this deck has a very powerful XYZ boss monster that removes in the strongest way possible without targeting, and boss stage is a value engine that, if not taken care of, will win you the game 8 times out of 10. There are also a lot of very strong and versatile rank 9s in Yu-Gi-Oh, which we can access with our engine, giving us outs to a lot of different cards. As for weaknesses, we lose to Ash. Hard. Also, if our opponents as evenly match or Nibiru, we can crawl into a tight space and cry, because they burn a lot of our interaction. Lastly, we need the field spell. Playing Generator without access to the field spell is like bringing a knife to a gunfight, but your opponent brought an M1 Abrams instead. Sure, the fight could end in any way, but let's be real. It will probably end with you on the ground, with a hole in your chest, dead. Is the metaphor clear enough? But yeah. No field spell, no fun. Thanks for watching. If you want me to cover a specific archetype, comment down below. Remember to like and subscribe. I need subscribers to fund my caffeine addiction and to save myself from a future where I have to dress up as a sexy bunny. I don't have time to explain this, so please just sub.